My name's Sean Bell. Welcome to Regular Features, my brand new show that I'm the king of. Now, it's customary to do something with the the number of the show, which is episode 151. How am I supposed to... You can't... Think something up. We all do it. No, What's wrong I'm, with you? Can't I'm... you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's a palindrome. We've got that, 151. 151, which backwards is also... 151. That's what palindrome means. Yes, yep. You're, you're hot to trot no, today, know, but... Mr. Bell. <laughs> hey, welcome. Well, I'll, I'll take it from here. <laughs> a very special episode of Regular Features today. I've got to, can I talk in my normal voice now? Yeah, I think so. Thanks, thanks. Permission accepted. And... Graciously. <laughs> We've splintered again to the four corners of the universe. Mm-hmm. Steve's in Austria, um, or at least is until... Five minutes from now, he's he doing. In, was he doing in Austria? I don't know. He sent us a lovely picture of a, a place with gongs in where he was staying, and I can only okay. assume it's some corrupt business <laughs> treat. Gav somewhere else. I don't know what the man is. Just uncontrollable. So don't. There's no point asking him where he is because he'll lie. I um, think with Gav, he's, he's, he's in many ways a concept more than a physical being. He's sort of everywhere and nowhere at once. It's um. Yeah, you only have to. <laughs> You whistle in the correct way and he'll, yeah. he'll coagulate around you. <laughs> any one of us could become Gav at any time. And, a terrifying um, thought. I think Matt Lees is at some convention being treated like a celebrity because, my God, the, the pool he swims in is so small that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm left with a Sean Bell. Yeah. How hello. are you, Sean Bell? I'm all right. I've just been for dinner with you. Yeah, in Nottingham, no less. Yeah, it was good. I, ate, um, I had some meat on a plate. Anyway... We've got features to do for you, but first, um, I'm assuming that um, someone, I haven't got anything yet, but someone will be emailing me a package that I'm going to insert just after this impromptu sing song with me and Sean. Choose a song, Sean. I don't know any songs. That's why it's impromptu. Just say something. <laughs> Let's sing it. Um. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to start. It sounded like I was, but I wasn't. <laughs> I don't know any songs. Don't stop. Never give up. Uh, the old head high and reach the top. Then the world seems to get too to, too much or too tough. Too top. Regular features Just now. now. Yay! <laughs> the, the, police. Jingle, the, jingle, the jingle police have arrived. <laughs> I depend on features. I depend on features. All the men that are doing features. It's regular features. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to actually episode 159 of the Regular Features, features podcast. podcast through time tunnels. Time tunnels. You Log. What's going on? Didn't I sound funny eight weeks ago? It's like you were a different person. A different, prettier person. With more moral, be- uh, with, a, with a more firm moral compass. These days I'll do anything for a fiver. <laughs> it's because you look terrible. What's happened? <laughs> I could be dragged backwards through a hell bush. This is the risks of travelling through time slowly, forward through time at a continued pace. It's too dangerous, no. <laughs> You can't do it. It's got to end sometime. You're going to get older. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is us um, doing a podcast. We thought we were doing this ages ago, but we're not. And well, yeah, so you're about to, to um, hear exactly how much we misunderstood this would eventually turn out. Yeah, we predicted it was going to be something special here, but it isn't. No. It's just me and Log. Anyway, let's send ourselves back to the past. I hope you've got some good special sound effects for this, Matt. I Otherwise do. it's going to be a narrative letdown in uh, an audio sense. Just you wait till you hear this. I can't, I can't wait to hear this, this sound noise. Effect. It's going to be good. If you're listening to BBC, I am available for Doctor Who. Roll... Sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Ooh, what did you think of that, Sean Bell? I think that was very good, that thing that I just heard. That either Gav did with maybe Joe Scrabbles, maybe Matt and Steve pulled their shit out. Is, I, what, is Joe on this one as well? Possibly. Why could I... I thought I was the only special guest. I'm not sharing the limelight. You may well be. Fucking Joe Scrabbles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the meanie, the bad guy, Joseph Scribbles! Hello, Sean Bell. You think you're the only guest? I'm the only guest on Regular Features. I'm the only one. You fuck off. Back to the north. Do I have to introduce my own thing? I believe it's time for your regular feature, Sean right. Bell. My name's Sean Bell, and my regular feature... Is that how you do it? Do you do it, like, on Jackass? My name's Sean Bell, own. and this is... We've all got our own way of doing it. 
my name's Sean Bell, and my regular feature is things that Matt and I may have fallen out about while we were teenagers at high school. So, <laughs> so I've, I've got a range. I've got a range of situations here that are all true. <laughs> But the question is, did me and Matt actually have like a raised voices, genuine falling out over it? Or was it just like a, a mild situation that was defused quite quickly? High and, school. And what, what age is high school exactly in this? Is it just from 11 to 16? 11 to, yeah, I think so. Yeah. God, what was he like back then? Was he was he quiet as, I don't know, um, well, I think, well, fruity I mean, it was, as he is now? Was, no, did you just call me fluty? Did you just claim that I'm a fluty person? <laughs> No. What does that even mean? I said fruity. And it was more a matter of trying to think, well, I know Matt's going to eventually hear this. And I know I'm in a room with Sean Bell at the moment, so I could say something really insulting just to kind of make Sean like me more there in the moment. Like, you know, that's what bitching about people behind their backs all about. Yeah, but you knew that I'd then listen to it. Exactly, which is why I stammered and said fruity, because that can be taken in a positive way. And also, you are flute-shaped, so I don't even see what you're complaining about. That's true, I do. If I did call you fluty, which I didn't. I do have a number of holes down my body, which can be held in whilst blown (laughs) to create different noises. Ah. But apart from that, I think he's just conjecture. That's, so, what, that's why I can be frequently found trying to play your arms while in a pub while you're talking. So I guess I should point out at this stage that uh, Sean Bell, who's the man you're listening to here, is somebody, if you're vaguely into video games and stuff, you might know him on Twitter. Famous Captain Toss? He is, Captain Toss on Twitter. He's a good guy. But also he's a guy who I've known for, like, a long time. Was it Love at First Sight? Did I you don't see him remember. across a crowded playground? I think it was more that we were just d- downtrodden geeks, and so we just sat next to each other because no one else liked us. But then, turned out he was a really cool guy. But we, it, he kind of is the guy who I was very close to in that fiery stage of my youth, and I'm a bit terrified now about what he's going to say because it's probably the things I who remember. Who knows what idiot things we said in the heat of teenage nerd passion. So I guess I'm going to find out now and uh, some sort of witch trial. Mmm, you're going to get dunked. Good. Maybe not. It's quite nice, really. It's good-natured. So, the first thing that Matt and I may have fallen out about as teenagers is the correct pronunciation of the title of the video game, Blast Core. Now, right. now, do you think this is something we got genuinely angry about, or do you think this is just a very simple disagreement that was quickly resolved? What side of the fence were you on? Were you saying Blast well, Core or Blast dreadfully, Corps? dreadfully, because I'm a real stickler for these things these days, I was saying Blast Corps. Right. The thing is, I can see this one getting heated because I don't know what it is in my head, and I, I don't. Would that mean I get? Would that mean I get angry about it, or would that mean I just sort of roll over and let the other person walk all over me, like always happens? <laughs> I think that was a minor argument. This was a genuine falling out. What Which, was then you stopped talking um, to each other for a while? We didn't stop talking to each other, but it was genuine. Like, got quite angry about it, and Matt had to confirm with his dad that it was in fact blast call. Oh, what a little snitch! I know. Um, his, dad, his dad's a smart guy, so he's 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 worth checking with in a pinch. If you're, if you're struggling in an argument, give Matt's dad a shout. Did you ever have? Did you ever work out? Is it Blast Court? It's Blast Court, yeah. It's French. <laughs> well, you're coming out of this looking quite good, better than me, in fact. Who doesn't even know how to pronounce it to fucking day? I genuinely, I said to you when I was listening back, I bet it was me that got it wrong. Because to be honest, like actually, Sean, when I first, he was a lot smarter than I was about lots of things and. He knew lots of things that I didn't. That's why, that's why you're so defensive. That's why. I was really worried. I was like, oh, this is going to be embarrassing. I, I'm going to be going off because I didn't know how to say core. Um, no, no, you've, you're missing the point of this. It's not who was right when they were 12. It's <laughs> you were both a pair of insufferable I am right pricks. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's basically And the, the fact that you're drawing the wrong thing from it shows there's still a little bit of that prick left in you today, oh, Matt. Oh, Yeah, no. <laughs> Second one. Matt making fun of my basketball skills. You said that with such a clenched <laughs> jaw. <laughs> Matt doesn't strike you as a cruel man. It, it seems, seems quite... No. Which is why I was very shocked by his behaviour and we did not speak for three days and we did the awkward... You know when couples break up and they have to give each other stuff back? We did that but with a copy of uh, Zelda The Wind Waker on the Game Boy. Um, and yeah, and, and, and it was like a so real thing. Hang- when you handed that back, did you say, thanks, it was shit? I think I just like put it, it on the desk and I was just like, there you go. I'm pretty horrified now that I just don't remember this. How easily are these... Can you ruin another man's life without you even knowing what you're doing? I don't even... Mrs. Cruel Tong Lees. I wonder... Oh, I can't remember why. 
He might have just done a shot and miss, and you looked at him and gone, well, from, to my mind, that sums you up entirely in terms of basketball, Sean. You're not very good at it, are you? Yeah. I'm sort of, it's coming back to me a little bit now. I think it might have just been one of those things where, like, as a kid, you just get obsessed with with something, and you, you care about it so much suddenly, and then one of your mates just points out that you're not very good at it, and and you just lose your shit completely. It's like actually a mutual friend of ours. Oh, yeah, it's briefly how you've chosen to define yourself. So, yeah, you can't, you cannot tolerate being shit at it. Yeah, it was like I remember um, a friend of ours, actually, like my mutual friend of mine and Sean's, decided that he wanted to be, because he got really into watching uh, ice hockey in America, and he decided he wanted to be an ice hockey player. I went um, ice skating with him, and like, he couldn't ice skate. Like, I was just going around, he was just holding on to the edge the whole time, but he decided at that point... He had all the gear and he decided he wanted to be a goalie in an ice hockey team. But he couldn't ice skate. So, <laughs> I'm not, I think Sean was probably better. Sean, if you're listening, I'm sure you're actually better than that basketball. Yeah, and, and all the, like, everyone at school was like, oh my God, have you heard Sean and Matt have fallen out? What? Your friendship was that legendary? Yeah. Well, because we were nerds, we didn't really have anyone else. So the fact that me <laughs> we'd rescinded our one <laughs> friendship. <laughs> oh, that's, there, was a, there was a big girl called Tabitha at our school and she gave me a... a Drink of her coat once, and the went around the me and her uh, bumming. Wasn't that sort of school? <laughs> Apparently, it is that sort of school now. It became a um, an academy because uh, they went on a school trip to uh, Rill. Um, which has like a big uh, fancy swimming baths, and apparently a lad fingered a girl while she was on her period in the pool. In the pool, um, and the pool like sued the school for a lot of money, so it had to become an academy in order to make ends meet. What? Yeah. You how? No, <laughs> a pool cannot sue someone for having a period in their pool. No, it wasn't. Well, it was, I think it wasn't I mean, a period. The, the, the fingering didn't the guy unleash was, the period. It yeah, wasn't, that's, that's, yeah, he wasn't beckoning it out. I mean, I'm no <laughs> expert, but yeah, I don't think that's how they work. Apparently, that's what happened. Oh. I've never, I've never corroborated this. I've heard this. Well, I'm not going to seek to from a child. It. I'd rather just be outraged um, as an <laughs> emblem of lit- the litigious culture we've become. <laughs> I mean, that must have. Whether or not they sued the school, that must have happened. Because who would make that up? Yes, who would make up something that makes society seem like it's a wreck? <laughs> apart from, like, fucking every right-wing columnist out there. Who'd make up shit? <laughs> just to illustrate their mindset. Well, obviously that had nothing to do with me, so I feel my right to reply is not really relevant here, but... God, shocking! I, I, I know! To this to this moment, I'm still thinking, no! No! I no. didn't even know about that! Look at the kind of thing you miss when you leave a place. Oh no, right? That's a cracking anecdote. <laughs> yeah. The school I went to I had to turn into an academy. You could have dined out on that for, for the first two years of your video gaming career, that Jesus. anecdote. If only I could turn back time. Eight weeks precisely? Yeah, let's do that. Makes Make the sound effect. <laughs> Situation number three. Did we genuinely fall out over whether or not we'd actually met years earlier at Cubs. I think it's time yeah. for a non-serious Are you one. gauging this? Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, we used to do this all the time. Yes. <laughs> I'm just getting the medal. Yeah, you guys are pros at this. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have gone for like the one thing um, that you're good at. But so you did, a, you did disagree about when you We met. did disagree about this. I have no... Basically, when we were... We must have been seven or eight. Uh, Matt and I were in the same Cubs group. <laughs> and I have absolutely no memory of it. And he kept insisting that we were. That means he was so obsessed and did, with you, and you were like, he must have been driven mad with the fact you yeah, hadn't even noticed him. Yeah, going nuts. And he was like, oh, I was the guy who fell in the nettles that time. And I was like, I remember, like, some kid falling in the nettles, but I know. <gasps> some I know, kid! I know. <laughs> Matt Lees would have been <laughs> driven wild, I <laughs> think. Um, and it was only proven. Matt Lees, the guy walking around Gen Con getting fucking <laughs> celebrated <laughs> in the past was just some kid. <laughs> Uh, but again, uh, Matt's dad to the rescue. Um, about, I think this must have been about three or four years into our friendship. Matt's dad uh, accidentally produced a photograph which showed me and Matt, me and Matt <laughs> in the nettles together, <laughs> writhing around, <laughs> and then laughing, stuffing uh, palmfuls of nettles into each other's boxes. <laughs> uh, no, just sitting next to each other. Oh. Um, which is great, because just a photo with us both on it would have been enough, but we were, like, sat right next to each other during the... What do they call it at the start, where they do... Registration? You, no, it's called it's did, called did something... Goody it's the grand howl, you stupid prick, Sean. Oh, hello, Gav. Gav. Hey, oh. how's it going? Wow, at least we're just slowly reassembling through the time vortices. Yeah, it's like our reality is suddenly becoming the reality as we go forward through time at a normal pace. 
And it's like it's like when we're apart, that's a false reality that must be discarded. Eventually, we will all be together. I don't remember what the beginning, but I mean, you say it was called the Grand Hal, but I don't remember that. Cubs. I think they called it something else where we're from. Probably because we yeah. lived up north and they're a bit racist. Um, I remember you called it Arcala. Was yeah, the name of it's the, all Jungle Book things. Yeah. It was all like yeah. But no, I remember that really vividly. Um, I guess except, because like you, except the panther, they were like, "No, that's too black." <laughs> Call it something else up north. Do yeah, I remember this argument for a long time? He wouldn't believe me that I'd met him at Cubs. He just assumed that I was. I don't know why. I don't know why. It was ridiculous. You said you liked me, Sean. Well, it was just <laughs> odd. I think it was because I'd moved up north. We talked I, about GoBots. I didn't know anyone. You see, yeah. so I think I was more aware of like if you if you're the new kid, you're more aware of everyone yeah. than anyone is aware of the new kid in a way because yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. be like, who can I be friends with? Yeah. I mean, it, it would seem like madness that he wouldn't remember you like be like oh remember when we went to coast together no i do not remember that like but i need you to because i'm by myself right now like i don't have any friends i've literally just made a connection i couldn't believe it's like when you think you see like when you're on a school trip away with the school and you think you see a member of your family you get really excited and you yeah. go oh no that weren't them actually but this was actually true this one was true and that cub group was absolutely insane right? mm. I, I remember the only things i remember about it is that a i fell into the nettles yeah b that Sean, Sean was there. <laughs> and that, see, the two games we used to play in this cub group, and this yeah. was cubs, we were, we were fucking kids. The two games we used to play were one game where they filled up a five litre bottle full of water and attached a rope to it, and the scout leader would just swing it round <laughs> in circles further and further out. And then the game was to, you either, have to jump over uh, it or yeah, duck under it. Yeah. Game. And you had to either jump under it, jump over it, or duck under it. Well, mm. that's kind of the thing that they do on. It's a, what's that water game? Wipeout. Yeah. Only with more of a chance of getting throttled to death by a mm. bolus. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is it was basically a. a <laughs> Feels like that would love the word bolus. <laughs> it did. That's the thing. It was great fun. It was amazing yeah. fun. Don't get me wrong. But it, if it clocked you properly, mm. it really knocked you over and hurt. But more often than not, it would swing around your legs repeatedly, and then right. you just get pulled yeah. to the ground. Okay. Um, and then the other game just involved being in an old shopping trolley, and just I think people just hurtling you into the wall. Into um, the wall. Into the wall. Yeah. Like, if you said into the water. That'd have been a bit more fun sounding. Yeah, it was it was it's grim up north. <laughs> Situation number four. Did we fall out over the time that we gave a baseball bat to a small child so that he could beat up his older brother who was bullying him? This is to d- to date one of the few things in my life I've done that I really regret. Well, really? Then, well. I thought you were going to say that you're still angry about it. No, I don't. Actually, interestingly, I don't remember falling out with Sean over this. Right. Um, so I'm really interested to hear what he says in a minute. But I I still regret it quite a lot because it was one of those heat of a moment things that felt like felt like you were doing karma, you know, in the fact that this little this little kid... Hang was, on. You're, he hasn't said yeah, what... Did. Come yeah. on. Let him explain. I, I feel bad, though. <laughs> well, you see, it was a strange situation because we gave him the bat and then he started beating shit out of his older brother. And then we were oh, like, really did. yeah, and then we sort of, it's like, well, maybe this wasn't the right move. So, okay, okay, give us a baseball bat. We took the baseball bat back off him and he started crying. Um, so we gave it him back. Gave- <laughs> and he started hitting him again. Yeah, but he was, he was sort of, we sort of like, right, you can have it back, but you don't like attack your brother anyway. His brother wasn't hurt or anything. Okay, how old was he? He was like five. Okay, so he wasn't, wasn't he wasn't strong enough to get a solid fucking no, no, arm he, breaking whack in. I don't think he like broke any bones or anything. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it I love how this makes it sound like we grew up in the roughest place. We grew up in fucking Knotsford. It's like the, it's these fucking uh George Osborne. From the Tina Turner song. Seat. Yeah. <laughs> And Matt lived on one of those estates where it's like it was like a sort of a network of cul-de-sacs. So it was like the ultimate safety. So the kids just used to like. If you zoomed out, it would look like a map of the human lung or something like that. Basically, yeah, Um, like a set of capillaries. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Capillaries. Um, Yeah, so all the kids used to play out. So you'd sort of you'd just sort of walk out of your house and stuff would be going on, and then you just nearly nearly turned sinister. No, me neither. Um, And it always used to freak me out because I'd go to Matt's house and the front door would never be locked. And in fact, his mum would get annoyed if you knocked on the front door. Like, no, stop it. Just come in. It's fine. <laughs> Just come in. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got me dressed down. I'm ready. <laughs> fucking walk in. I was going to say, no, we didn't fall out over that. It was just a silly thing that we were sort of uncomfortable about for some time afterwards. Well, there's no, yeah, there's no reason for you to fall out because you both acted together on that one. Yeah. We were sort of in it, but, but, but was it sort of... What I want to go back to is, yeah. was the kid crying because you'd taken the bat off him or yeah. because he had a moment of realisation that he'd just been... I don't know, he was crying because he took the bat off him and he couldn't 
he'd smash his brother up in the mud. That would have been a better story if, if, he, then, uh, yeah. if, if he'd just realised the power that was in him and in how he could be used <laughs> for evil. But no, no, he's just a little realized. fucking psycho. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So you enabled the brutalisation of a child. It's almost yeah. from fucking This Is England. <laughs> <laughs> I have to add, he didn't point this out, but it was like, it wasn't a proper baseball bat. It was one of those like ones covered in foam. So it was kind of, a, it wasn't that. Dangerous. But he took the foam off <laughs> to make more damage. The <laughs> and he sharpened the edge. Pure metal. <laughs> Pure metal. <laughs> so hang on. The little kid's older brother, how yeah. old are we talking here? Oh, they must have been like 50. six and no. <laughs> like six and seven or like oh, six oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 right. no, six and eight because there was, there was, there was a little <clears throat> size difference. It was a right. thing of where the little boy, I remember it was called, it was called Little Christopher. It's probably safe to dox him now. He's now probably in his 20s. Which one was called Little? The little one or the big one? The little one was called Little Chris. Oh, it's what not a Robin Hood thing then. It's fine. No. Okay. <laughs> no um, and how old were you guys? We must have been uh, 15, 16, I think. But we just, we've been playing rounders and we just saw that it was this thing of, it It was that younger brother, <clears throat> older brother thing where, you know, the older brother's still just using that last few years of, of being bigger yeah. to assert dominance and having that frustration of the younger one. Mm. And we just, it was the closest we've come to playing God. Or... Why didn't you just give them both guns? <laughs> if you want to level the playing field, but I'm, give I'm, them all guns. I'm, cu- I'm curious to how he's like, did you go over and break it up and be like, hey kids, you want to get your own back? You just a fucking back, go at it. I think we were we were they were just in the street and they were just having a fight and then he was just basically he was just bullying his younger brother right, and then right. it was it wasn't like leveling the playing field really it was giving an advantage it was like well but yeah he's giving hmm. him a bat it felt, <laughs> it felt like a good idea it felt like karma it felt like oh we'll give him the bat and then he can beat up his brother and then it'd be like all's well in the world how, as soon as we did it we just thought yeah how we've quickly made a that's really a really big mistake how, yeah. just how quickly did you did you go oh no we fucked up well <laughs> how many how many times did the bat land home on his fragile child's like, did, skull did he, was, he, was he sort <laughs> of like I'm curious as like was he like just poking him with it or was he just like right now you we fucking go no he was just going at him he wasn't doing any damage it was just clearly that we it was like did you say and so we enter end game <laughs> <laughs> it was just this thing of, it was like it wasn't that he was actually hurting his brother it was more that we've just like oh god we've just kind of allowed this child to have a situation in which we've shown him that violence is an adequate like solution well you've been promoting it I kind of worry like because I think about this a lot I don't know why it's one of the things for my child one of the few things I really do regret and why I think about a lot and I wonder what that guy's up to or how he's doing uh, why? if he's turned out alright you like, should have said we gave you power and you abused that power so we now we're away. going to give the bat to your brother yeah you oh. see the balance can so easily tip it's always good to be kind to those with less power than yourself. It sounds, I want to make you feel better about yourself, it sounds a lot worse than it actually is. But, yeah. but, but the actual story sounds a lot worse. In my head, it's like a, it's like a kind of condensed, <laughs> localised allegory for arms dealing. And the fact we're like, oh, this guy's the underdog. Let's help him out. Yeah. Oh my God, we've made a huge mistake. Except in this case, luckily, we were able to then take the arms off of him before he, he was he'll able to become him. a terrorist group and start murdering Americans. But then you gave it back to him. <laughs> Yeah, but then we got it off again. <laughs> we had to go and do some stuff. I couldn't leave with my baseball bat. I had to go and do some baseball or something. Randers. Uh, it's nice because it comes from a place of... Like, it comes from... You were trying to do the right thing. That's what I think. I was really worried what Sean was going to say about that, though, because I don't... It's one of those things where I remember... Because <laughs> the kid died. I remember Sean was there. I remember we did it. But I don't remember any more specifics. And I was worried he was going to say, yeah, Matt did it. And I was like, what are you doing? And this idea that maybe I was evil and I've just erased that from my memory in the helpful way that you people do. I thought you were going to be like, and the little kid got a taste fair and fucking went off and started killing kids. Well, maybe he did. I don't know, because I, I don't know. I'm not in touch with him. Did we fall out over... How to properly care for a pair of suede shoes. Who did the shoes belong to? The shoes belong to me. Oh. If you if they belong to Matt, I'd have said definitely you had the full <laughs> yeah, uh, no, no, I I'd say I'd still say yes. Because I think we, we fell out about this briefly, but it was very bitter for a time. Um so Matt, how, how Matt was trying to explain to me quite rightly that there is such a thing as a suede brush and that you're supposed to use one on suede shoes. We use suede brush for suede. We use grape scissors for grapes. Exactly. Um, <laughs> he doesn't laugh enough at grape scissors for my liking. And you can tell your little laugh afterwards. I know. You it was, do it that. was such an apologetic <laughs> laugh. Well, I'm going to do a little sad laugh if you're not, Sean Bell. <laughs> Peter says, exactly. And on he goes exactly. his story. <laughs> for whatever reason, I was having none of it. Um, I just refused to believe him there was such a thing um, and yeah and, and again uh, see, this is Matt's mum came to the what, rescue what on this your, one what was your reasoning behind that just like it's, just the like, very idea seemed what, ludicrous what, they've got a brush for every fucking fabric yeah exactly like how does that work and it's like, and it's like, oh, and it's, like it's got like metal on it 
What's what? <laughs> so Matt's mum came Bullshit, w- waddling out Bullshit. of the toilet to solve yeah. this one. Yeah, she did. Um, <laughs> and she confirmed. Um, I, I mean, I, I dare say my parents might have corroborated any of this, but I never, I don't know, I never brought this stuff to them. Uh, maybe I should have spoken to my parents more. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want to delve into that. That sounds like they haven't recently died, have they, Sean? No. Oh, my God, that's fine. That's fine. Well, you've still, you've still got time separate. to build bridges then. They did separate nine years ago, but they're not dead. So, swings and roundabouts. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm feeling a bit bad now, because I was going into this expecting to have memories from my past dredged up and feel ashamed for my awfulness. But really, it looks like most of the time it was just Sean being wrong about stuff and being <laughs> angry. Yeah. And I'm, just, I'm sure that wasn't always the case, but he's just brought a really poor set of hand, cards to this table. You and know? you know when that thing where once mm. something feels complete in your head and when sort of you can just set it aside and you forget about it instantly, yeah. it sounds like this is just a, a series of resolved issues in your yeah. life that you no longer need to think about. But he's got so many ants in his pants and well, this is the thing. He, thorns like, in his paws. For, for, the, for the suede brush... I don't understand how you're falling out of that because there's a there's a proper right and a wrong answer. It's not like something bad has happened that you can you know you, you both have got different opinions about something. Suede brush. Yeah. There's either a suede brush or there's not a fucking suede brush, isn't I it? I think this was the point in our life when we were we were both quite uh, arrogant <laughs> and we were both quite uh, stoic. Yeah. And I think this was kind of amplified by a third guy who was a friend with our friend with us at school yeah. who I'm not really in touch. With. I don't think he called Shane really Meadows. He was really bad. He was like super like arrogant. Whenever he thought he was right, he was right, and he wouldn't even look up anything. He would refuse to. The internet has probably destroyed this man. I don't know where he is or what he's doing. <laughs> in his life, but he was awful for this stuff, and I think he made us worse. But we yeah. had this sort of period where somebody would think something and somebody else would think something else, and it would just immediately be locked horn. There'd be no effort to go. Well, should we look at? Should we find out? Yeah, it would just be like I'm right, you're wrong. But that's the thing, though. It's harder in the time before the internet because you'd just be out. I don't know, playing yeah. in a park, and you'd be like, "Well, no, make sure you do." This. You'd never go to the yeah. library, would you? Like, <laughs> you wouldn't imagine going to the library. To the library. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would make you the worst. What? But also, the thing yes. is, what is the Dewey Decimal number for suede brushes? <laughs> <laughs> but also, in with this, you've got a northern thing as well, because I think like what northerners don't have suede. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, northerners would like don't like fuss or anything like that. So to a northerner, having suede shoes fine. Having a special brush that you can only use for suede, I can imagine northerners being like. I remember this one because I, I think I remember that Sean had just got some suede shoes and he was telling me he was like oh the great thing about suede shoes you don't have to care for them at all they just they, just, the opposite. they just look after they, themselves they comb and, themselves like dreadlocks yeah. <laughs> I think it was so like that and I was kind of like I don't think they do I think that I think that actually it might be that the opposite is he's giving it a big one jumping in puddles we go no 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 Sean <laughs> But I think I feel bad for Sean now because I think actually what he's remembered, sadly, is he's remembered the moments where he was wrong because that's the that's how life is with your brain. You remember the things when you're made to look stupid. Oh yeah, well, that's, that's, that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. saying. Like it's like you did not you don't remember these because you just dismiss them as some not no big deal. Yeah, because yeah. Sean's which leads me to think of his bonds. <laughs> of his bonds on loopy drugs. <laughs> You've probably got some stories in which Sean Bell was right. Well, I don't know. I don't care to share there's them. There's actually one story which I cannot remember who was right and who was wrong. In my head, I still believe I was right, but fuck knows what that means. But we had a massive falling out um, over a Warhammer soldier, an Eldar soldier. Okay. And he collected Eldar and I didn't. But because he collected Eldar and I like look at the models, I remember I just got a couple of them just because I wanted to try painting them because they were cool. Yeah. And I painted one of these Eldar and then he I saw I love it. you so much. <laughs> He saw it around my house and he was convinced it was his because it was an Eldar. And I, I had this oh. awkward thing of being like, no, man, that's mine. Because it was like, and I'm so sorry if you're listening to this, Sean. This, was, this, is, not is, me. this is not me <laughs> speaking. This is my teenage myself speaking. But I remember thinking, no, I've painted that like, I've, I've painted that really well. Like, you're not as good at painting as I am. And oh. that's, that's And Did you say that to him? I can't remember if I said that or not. I may have done that. It's like the nerd version of 8 Mile. Yeah, I was. You probably did say. I, I, I probably insinuated it, but I don't. Sorry, Sean. Can you just check? Is that painted by a blind man? No, it's probably mine, there, mate. Fuck nah, he off. Was, he was good. He was good. Don't get me wrong. But That's like, how like. Sound like shit. Nah, he was. He was alright. He was alright. But but not as good as you. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Well, no. I, I in my in my head, no. But I don't know what that means. And that's that's the important thing is. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember. You who was equals right good, or Sean wrong. equals shit, and wrong again. I can't even remember who kept the model because I remember we had an argument about <gasps> who it was, and it was in my house at the time. I can't remember you. if he took it, and I kind of 
like backed off. I love or the thing where you just like, do you know what, Sean? Fucking take it. At least take and then he's got it home. Take put it in the middle of the rest of his army and just like, well, oh, yeah, that doesn't look really good actually. I better take him out of that. <laughs> I've no idea. Um, but that's one of the things that stands in my head as I was having a big fallout. So there we go. Right, last one. Last, last one. one. Did we fall out over our favourite Spice Girl? Now, bear, bear in mind, okay. this was 1996. The height of girl the power. The height of girl power. Did you fall out over your favourite Spice Girl? I'm or, going or did to... we simply disagree? <laughs> I'm going to say, because you both gone on to become professional opinion havers mm. and you love nothing more than foisting your opinions on other people. Yeah. I'm saying you proper fell out because you can't deal with disparity <laughs> of opinion. Uh, no, we didn't. Oh, in that case. Healthy disagreement. Um, <laughs> well, I, maybe that's what makes you good games. I was, <laughs> uh, I was flitting between Jerry and Victoria. Oh, so you weren't even committed. And now you see, here's the thing, right? Because most people go through the sort of spectrum as they grow older, right, of the Spice Girls, and they prefer different ones as you reach certain phases in your life. Matt, fair play to him. <laughs> colours of the spectrum including ginger, black and baby. <laughs> uh, Matt, fair play to him. From day one, back to Emma Bunton, which is the one that everyone comes to fancy as they reach adulthood. No, I'm sorry, this just isn't true. I don't want, I don't want to say it. it's a smear necessarily, but no, I mean... The reality of this situation is I, from, from day one, I was always a Jerry man. And now that's changed, okay? That's changed. Now I'm, I'm fully Bunton. Really? Yeah. I was always Jerry, and I will remain Jerry to the day that I die. Well, even in, in her modern UN ambassador phase. She has shaped my sexual preferences from the day that I first saw her face. Wow. And I go for that kind of lady all the time. Shorts, quite buxom. Union Jack. Red hair. Union Jack. <laughs> Looks like she would run my show. <laughs> <laughs> he fell out about this. He was he was being stupid. Right, so we didn't really deal with the meat of the potatoes in this in this issue. I remember this. We were on a bus, we were <clears> arguing <throat> about this, about which Spice Girl was the fittest. Now I know a lot of people at home will be aware of this. It is an empirical it's an empirical test. There are there are it's correct part answers. Of everyone's life, yeah. There are correct answers at any one time within the Spice Girls continuum yeah. timeline, right? And he was adamant. Is it purely you? Is it, is it you that changes? Do the Spice Girls remain constant and yeah. you change? Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, this is just quantum physics. Like, this is not... Well, they can be observed and put in a position. You, you can actually see and... Well, yeah, because yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I change my mind based on, like, now and again, I'll be like, there was when there was a photo of Mel B and Eddie Murphy, and I thought, oh, that's good. I thought, yeah, maybe I'll change my mind and go, and go for... If, if it's good enough for Eddie Murphy, it's good enough for me. Because we share a name. That's terrible. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> no, I remember he's, he's sort of changed the truth to what happened now. I remember now. He said that, you know, everyone flits between Jerry and and, uh, and Posh. Yeah. And I was a Bunton oh, man. No posh. one likes It's not posh. true. Well, this, well, I'm preaching to the fucking choir with this one then because I remember what the actual argument was. I was saying Jerry all the way. Yeah. And he was adamant that it was posh. And this was posh at the peak of her just dating Beckham thin as a rake, like nothing on her at all. And I was like, no, not posh. She's snooty. She's way too thin. Posh. She's posh. <laughs> Fuck the Tories. Aloof spice. <laughs> and I didn't know Sean that well at this point when we had this argument. We'd kind of fallen out for other reasons for a long period of our life. Um, we had actually a major fallout. As you might have heard earlier. No, we had actually a major fallout for about four years, but now I'm, you know, good mates again. But mm. uh, but yeah, so it was a bit of a tense thing, but I just, I think I remember struggling off thinking, posh spice, get on your bike. What a prick. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not even listening to this. This is nonsense. Mm. Of course, everyone's allowed their own opinion, but uh, as we all kind of worked out posh spice is not the right answer not definitely it's not, it's not even no. an answer no let alone she the right one she was sporty so that was Sean I love him but god he's wrong isn't he he's wrong all the time <laughs> wrong all the time why are my friends with this wrong man we'll call this episode wrongular features <laughs> oh, featuring yeah. Sean Bell that's good actually I like that not bad is that so in, in summary mm. um, is Matt, was Matt Lee's a better person as a child than he is now no we were both terrible I mean we're still quite Terrible, but... but okay, so who do you think so. is a better person now, you or Matt Lee? <laughs> I'm not answering that. There's, a, well, there's, there's no way well, There's no way of answering that question. It's impossible. Regular features. You know, there's one thing I miss about living in London, Sean. What's that, Log? 
It's having conversations with my friends that I've already written the scripts for. We are a very attractive man. Sean, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. Are you even paying attention? I am paying attention to your luscious, pouting lips. and I'm imagining the mottled bell end of my liver-spotted penis nudging at their appealing dampness. <laughs> well, that, well, that's as may be, and who can blame you? But I've got something important I want to say. OK, then, peachy teats, what is it? Well, I feel like I've bigged it up too much now. No, go on, I'm sure it's amazing. Oh, shut up, you're making it worse. No, Log, you need to say this right now. I think I want to do another Pussy Pals feature. With four appearances over 151 episodes, the Pussy Pals are the closest thing the ever-changing regular features podcast has to a recurring theme. Apart from 89 instances of Gav being an arsehole to strangers, Log trying to have sex with Steve 48 times, Roger Helmer everywhere, everyone doing Is It Real or Did I Make It Up quizzes every week, the baffling persistence of Matt Lees, and the fact that it's just four blokes talking every week. The Pussy Pals first appeared in episode 58, and are based on an 8-track cassette recording that was intended to keep truckers awake on long journeys by giving them something to beat their girthy trucker meat to. Featuring two women who are ostensibly friends but casually called each other whores and bitches, they both fucked Joe the bartender and wanked off with bananas during their brief telephone conversation. Log decided to take these empowered women and get four men to imitate them in an act of anti-feminist cultural violence that made him the darling of Gamergate that he is today. So give your rocking chair back until you're on your tiptoes and stay there until we're finished because it's time for the Pussy Pals to briefly return. Oh, hi, Log, you hot bucket of slug pate. Oh, take a seat, you shit-scuffing son of a bitch. You look like you've taken a porcelain dick to the temple. You're too kind, sweet friend of mine. Oh, I couldn't be too kind to you, you gorgeous assortment of stoma holes. Well, let's get to business quicker than you squirt when you think about cock, you perpetually hungry wormhole for spunk. With pleasure, buddy of my leaking bosom. I understand you want to join the East Midlands contingent of the Pussy Pals. Wait, I didn't realize you actually called yourself the Pussy Pals. Excuse me, bestest titty chum of mine in waiting. I mean, I didn't realize the Pussy Pals was an in-universe title that we, as characters, were aware of. You astonishing and erotic caricature. Have you been vaping cum, you dumb whore? What did you think the PP t-shirts we always wear were about? I thought it was because we drank piss. What? I thought it was pee-pee. I thought it was a piss-drinking club. What is in your glass, Sean? Piss. Sean, mate, we are in a classy restaurant. I can't believe you smuggled in a flask of piss. Is is it your own? Don't be weird. It's just generic piss. You can't have generic piss. It has to come out of a dick or a fanny. I don't know. I, I never thought of it like that. Which leads me to question how you've been thinking about piss, given that you wanted to join what you thought was a piss-drinking club. I just like the taste. It's good and fruity. Fruity? Don't believe you. The body would surely use up all the fruitiness. Fruitiness seems useful. <sighs> Give me some of that fruity piss, you greedy bitch! Get your own thermos, you piss dealing dick of Sauron! <laughs> I love you, my piss drinking buddy! Grab a straw, you hairy whore! <laughs> <laughs> Was that okay? Yeah, no, you are a fucking great pussy <laughs> man. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. That was liberating. Sean, you've been a wonderful guest. Thank you. And an adequate friend. <laughs> and I'd like to give you the chance to say, to say anything you like before the sun sets on another episode of Regular Features. Well, normally this is the bit, if you guest on a show, where you plug your own stuff, but I don't think you ever let Joe do that, so I think I'm just going to disappear. Hey, you plug your stuff! Uh, on Twitter and if you like video games but if you're a grown adult don't worry about it well I I certainly listen to thank you thank you very much Sean <laughs> good night good night <laughs> hey log hmm do I get a cut of the fucking Patreon money for doing this shit <laughs>